So it's time for me to start my own personal strand along journey. As many of you will know, I've wanted 2016 to be my year of stranded work and I haven't done a great deal of it so far. Just one cowl. It's a nice cowl, I'm very proud of it, but I need to get more and more stranded work under my belt so I can make myself better at this quite taxing technique. My tension is a little bit off. Uh, I tend to be quite a tight knitter, which is not great for stranded work. And if I try to knit loosely enough for stranded work, it gets all loose and floppy. So I've got to try and find somewhere in the middle to make this work. So I want to share with you my strand along journey. And uh, this is the first stage, casting on. I've been spending a good bit of time over the last few days working on my pumpkin hat, the All Hallows hat. This is the second version. Many of you will have seen from my podcast the first prototype and the beginnings of this one. Well, look, you can see I've done his mouth now. It is a kind of stranded work. It definitely is. It's ladderback jacquard, so it certainly does have some stranding in it, but it's not... Uh, it's not applicable for my strand along because I cast it on the day before the 1st of October, so it doesn't count. So move to the side, and this is what I'm going to be working on. This is the set that I bought uh, while I was visiting Riga when I did the cruise a couple of months ago. And inside, here's the pattern. Actually, that's, that's the chart, and that, that really is, that's kind of all you get. So I need to work out exactly what I want to do. There's going to be a lot of maths involved in, in making this work so I know exactly what the pattern repeat is on here because this is all the information you get for patterning. And as you can see, in some of the rows, this one for example, we've got all four colours working together. This is going to be a monumental challenge for me. Uh, inside the box we've got two little skeins of the black. We've got the red, the green and the yellow. And here is the pattern, Knit Like a Latvian, or How to Make a Genuine Pair of Latvian Mittens. Now, I'm uh, aware that I'm going to have to do quite a lot of work deciphering this because I've already had a quick look at it and I'm not entirely sure what it all means. So, wish me luck and join me later. Now, interestingly, the pattern here says that I need uh, 1.5 mil 5 double-pointed needles. As it turns out, I happen to have a set. I panicked when I saw that, but these are from when I started knitting my Sanka gloves, and I bought two pairs by mistake, so I've got one spare. The others are still in my gloves because they're languishing, I'm afraid, and I will get back to those as a stranded project, hopefully sometime later this year. So, let's cast on. The first instruction here is cast on the necessary amount of stitches. Well, I don't know what that is yet, so I suspect I'm going to have to do a quick swatch. First job, however, let's ball up these mini skeins. There, that didn't take long. Now to find out how to knit a Latvian mitten. Mm. Well, I have to admit to being a little bit baffled by the beginning instructions for this recipe. It does say how to calculate the size of your mitten and you measure the circumference of your palm. I understand that. That's OK. Um, but there's two ways of starting the mitten. One is with the, the fringe and one is with the notches. I quite like the idea of the fringe. Um, but I'm not entirely sure how to get it going. I have to do some more work more research. I'm looking online and there's not a great deal of information about how to work a Latvian mitten fringe. I've tried YouTube with no luck. You definitely live and learn as you go along. I started casting on in the black yarn and immediately realised that I wouldn't be able to see what I was doing in order to count stitches in my swatch. So I'm actually going to scratch that and cast on with a much more vision friendly colour. Golly, these stitches are tiny. At this rate, I'm going to be extending this strand along until Christmas 2017. Well, on we go. All right, so I haven't even got into the second row really of my swatch and I've already decided this is not the yarn and needle combination for me. These uh, fiddly little uh, 1.5mm DPNs are so flimsy 
I just feel like I'm in danger of bending them in half, just trying to pull the, the yarn through at that point every time in the stitch, every time what's happening here, I'm sort of, well, you can't really see on camera, I'm bending and bending and bending just to draw that loop back and already it's not fun. Hmm. I think if I, look at that, just splitting the stitch as we go, it's almost impossible. I think this yarn is actually a little bit too thick for these needles. So I'm going to go up to my two mil DPNs and see how I get on with those. Ta-da! Yep. This is a lot easier. Definitely the way to go. So I'm just going to finish this row and then I shall add a different colour. Get some stranding going on, otherwise my swatch will be pretty much useless. So my little swatch is coming along. I think a couple more rows and I'll be ready to do some measuring. Yes, I'm doing it flat. Yes, I'm purling on the back. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered to set it up in the round. I know that's going to make a little difference to the tension, but I think uh, being a glove doesn't matter that much. It's a tiny gauge. So it seems with my gauge in the stranded work I'm looking at 17 uh, stitches per two inches which is uh, of course 8.5 stitches per inch and my hand my palm measures 20 centimeters which is exactly eight inches well, pretty much around so eight times 8.5 gives me oh, 60 something about 70 stitches I shall uh, do the math properly and cast on I think that's it for this uh, day one of uh, the strand along diaries I shall be back at some point soon when I've got something more tangible than this tiny swatch to show you